Hi everyone, my name is Justin from Codehaven, and today we're going to be going over week two of the online curriculum. And today we're going to be covering conditionals. So my worksheet is at the top of the page, the coding is at the bottom of the page, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is make the scratch cat run away from the mouse pointer. And let's look at the blocks we need. We have a yellow block that looks like this flag. We have two orange blocks, forever and if then. We have the sensing block, which is light blue, therefore it's in the light blue blocks. And you have a normal blue block, which is under motion, which has the same color. Note that the motion block says glide one second to random position, but the one in the example says glide 0.5 seconds. Therefore, we need to change this parameter in order to get the correct number. All right, now we need to put them together. Let's take a look at the instructions. First, set up the program so it starts when we click the flag and runs forever. Okay, not too bad. We need to create a conditional that runs if the pointer gets too close to scratch. And then you need to complete the conditional to make scratch run away when the conditional is satisfied. And that's how we'll do it. We want the conditional to happen indefinitely, so you just got to put it in the forever loop. Let's see if it works. We press the green flag to run the program, and every time we touch Scratch, he indeed seems to be running away from our mouse. Wow! Alright, so it was a success. And if you were fo following along, you will be able to get a sticker from this, because we just completed the first checkpoint. Alright, let's go to the second checkpoint. This is a different problem. Now we want to make Scratch run towards the mouse whenever it's held down. Well, there are some things we can reuse. Reusing is very important in programming as long as you give proper credit. So now, instead of 0.5, we want 0.2. Instead of a random position, we want to glide to the mouse pointer. And whenever the user lets go of the mouse, we should spin around. That means we need to test if the mouse is down. So we'll need to change our sensing uh, block to mouse down, like that. Also, we're using a new type of conditional if then else instead of just if then. That means we need to go to control and replace it with a different block. All right, so we did if mouse down, then you want to glide. Otherwise, we want scratch to spin. And it turns out there is one more block we need, and that's turn some amount of degrees. This one looks like the block that's most similar. We need to turn 15 into 2. And then once we put it in and assemble it in the forever loop, Scratch is indeed spinning. But whenever we hold the mouse down, you won't be able to see it, but I'm holding the mouse down, he runs to our position. Wow. So there are also two other uh, small things we should try out before we get the sticker. Can we make him rotate the other way? Well, if rotating two degrees sends him in that direction, rotating negative two degrees should send him in the opposite direction. And yes, it does. If we want him to move faster, uh, we need to decrease his glide time. Because in a race, the faster you are, the less time you take to get to your destination. So let's change the 0 0.2 to 0 .00, uh, 0 0.002. And let's turn the negative 2 to negative 20. Now he's spinning really fast, and whenever we click the mouse, he's going to go there almost instantly. That's pretty fast. All right, so now that we've completed these challenges, we'll get another sticker. Now we are going to part three, upside downsizing. We need to make scratch grow or shrink when we press the arrow keys. Let's take a look at what blocks we need. We still need the forever loop and the one flag clicked, so those are probably going to be the same. We're going to replace all this stuff with, a new, with another if-then loop. You can delete blocks by either pressing backspace or by simply dragging them into the original uh, sort of area that they came from, like recycling. All right, we also need a sensing block, key, and if key space pressed, but we need to change it to if up arrow pressed, and we need to change his size by 10. It's a purple block, so we look under the purple, and boom, got it. All right, so that should work. We also need to make him shrink when we press the down key. That seems really similar to making him grow, so what you can do is simply select this, copy it, and paste it with Control-C, Control-V. 
We'll turn, change the up arrow into a down arrow. We'll change the size from 10 to negative 10. Keep in mind that changing a number to its negative usually accomplishes the opposite effect. Once we've done that, let's see if this works. Can't see it, but I'm pressing the up key, and he's growing. And if we press the down key, he's going to shrink. So we've done that, and now we want to see. Can we? Now we want to do the challenges. Can we make Scratch rotate left and right with up down keys? Let's do one bigger and actually combine it with the size. So let's say he turns in one direction with the uh, when he grows, and let's say he turns in the opposite direction when he shrinks. Note that these two blocks are really similar. The only difference is there's going to be a negative. Uh, that turning left 15 degrees is the same as turning right negative 15 degrees. Let's see if this works. Yes, it does work. All right, that's the first challenge. Good job. The second challenge is going to be, can you make him move back and forth and up and down with the arrow keys? All right, that's pretty different. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need, first of all, a lot more keys. We have two keys, but we need four keys. So let's do that. Boom. We also need the left key and you need the right key. And what do we need him to do in all these cases? This is a bit complicated, but for now, just think of uh, X as left, right, as you can see here. Think of Y as up, down, as you can see here. Once we do that, that means that the up key is going to need, um, the left and right keys are going to need changing X, while the uh, up and down keys are going to need changing Y. Since, they are, since we need to accomplish the opposite effect, the down key is going to be negative 10, and the left key is going to be negative 10. Now, if we put this whole big thing into the forever loop and try it out, and we change Scratch to a more reasonable size, let's see if that actually works. Okay, he's going up, he's going down, he's going left, and he's going right. Perfect. That's the second checkpoint. The final uh, challenge is going to be, can we make him change colors? Well. Colors are sort of related to looks, right? Appearance. So let's look for something that can change his color. We got say, think, switch, next, size. Let's keep going, scroll down. Ah, there we go, changing his color effect. Let's just put that into all the uh, blocks so that whenever we press any of these keys, he's gonna change colors. All right, let's see if it works. Wow, he is changing colors very quickly, and he's a very radiant, rainbow-colored, prismatic cat. So that's the third challenge. Now we're going to go to the final checkpoint. How do conditionals fit into the maze? Remember, a conditional is something of the form if-then. If the sky is cloudy, then it will rain, along those lines. If the light is red, stop. If the light is green, go. Also, there's an else statement. For example, if the password is correct, start scratch. Else, don't start scratch. So that's, uh, so conditionals are gonna fit into the maze because you might, in any maze, you need to move around to get to the end. So that means when you code your maze, you're definitely going to need a conditional to move scratch like this. Also, you need a if then statement for if scratch hits a wall, so therefore you're going to need another conditional. What else can you imagine doing with conditionals? Well, we can make a traffic light. We can make Scratch have a disco party with changing colors. So there's a lot of things you can do. Where do you see conditionals in your life? Well, there's a lot of places where you could see conditionals. Let's, the examples we discussed are traffic lights, passwords, video games, uh, and a lot of programming. But I'm interested in hearing from you all. Try and think of your own examples of seeing conditionals in your life. Something along the lines of if, then. Thank you for listening. It's been great. See you next time.